Today on BRS TV Investigates, in the last episode, we learned the secrets behind T5 bulb spectrums that have created decades of epic tanks and how those spectrums relate to LED technology of today. And this week, we find out if it's possible to emulate those proven T5 spectrums using LEDs. And if so, can LEDs actually do it better? Let's find out if LEDs will be the ticket to achieving better coral coloration in our tanks. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates. We put popular reefing gear, theories, and methods to the test by experimenting on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And in today's experiment, we answer two questions. First, can we use LEDs to match the spectrum mix from our BRS recommended T5 bulb combination for this eight bulb ATI fixture? And second, can LEDs actually improve on that spectrum in ways that T5s just aren't able to do? I'll tell you right now that if we use LEDs intelligently with a goal in mind, the answer to both of those questions is a resounding yes. Not only can we match the coral growth and metabolic performance of the T5 spectrum, but there are three distinct reasons why today's LED technology can actually beat the spectrum mix of T5 bulbs alone. The real question is, how do we do that? And today we show you the answer. If you watched last week's episode, we broke down the spectrum of 16 different T5 bulbs. And from that data, we created our BRS recommended eight bulb T5 combo, following a similar formula that we use to create recommended spectrum mixes for LEDs by first adding in blue bulbs that span those optimal blue spectrum ranges between 400 and 500 to support those coral energy needs by using four ATI Blue Plus bulbs. After that, we used two of the hybrid bulbs or ATI Coral Plus to bring in some white and balance out the tank for an eye-pleasing look. Then we finish off the eight bulb combo using two true actinics with their spectrum peaks at 420 for some additional violet light and coral pop and fluorescence. For what it's worth, Ryan and I tried all sorts of bulb combinations from the 16 bulb types we had available, measured the spectrum mix both visually and using a spectrometer, and from what you see here from our BRS recommended bulb combo is our best attempt at creating a wide, broad spectrum approach targeted at making the tank balance to the eye that also serves the needs of the corals while accenting their fluorescence. For our goals of coral metabolic function being top priority followed by an eye-pleasing tank, this bulb combo is what we believe will be the best to achieve those goals. So now that we have this spectrum mix using T5s, our goal today is answering those two questions. Is it possible to match the same spectrum using LEDs like the AI Hydra 64, Kessel A360X, G5 Radeon Blue, and the MaxSpec Razor X? And if so, can we actually improve upon it? As you're about to find out, one of these LED modules match our BRS recommended T5 spectrum nearly identically out of the box. However, all of them have some surprising unique advantages in other areas when utilized to achieve very specific goals. Let's find out how they performed. In order to conduct today's test, I'll first show you what each LED has to offer in individual controllable spectrum ranges, then use those adjustable channels to try our best to mimic the recommended T5 spectrum, show you what we came up with, and then share some thoughts on how each LED was able to achieve this, and it all begins with the AI Hydra 64. From the seven controllable color channels in the AI Hydra 64 offering, we see a UV channel that peaks at 408 nanometers, a violet channel at 411, royal blue that jumps to a 450 peak, blue channel with a peak at 471, green at 514, a red at 660, and a white channel that has a prominent peak at 443, and a hump in that green to yellow area around 550. After making multitudes of dynamic tweaks to the Hydra 64 7 channels, we finally landed as close as we could to our T5 bulb spectrum, with the channel set to UV and violet at 140, royal set to 145%, blues at 100%, greens at 90, zero for the red, and cool whites at 40. Compared side by side to our T5 custom spectrum, we find that it is less than perfect match, which is likely due to the Hydra being underrepresented in that 425 range. As we saw from the individual color channels, 420 to 440 just isn't there. However, an informed reefer should be able to solve that gap by supplementing the Hydra 64 with some T5 actinic bulbs, which peak at 420. That said, there is an LED benefit here over T5s in that once you've maximized the blue spectrum range for coral metabolic function and growth, 
you can make dynamic changes to the other lighting components that make the tank look awesome and more appealing to the eye by adding in varying degrees of whites, greens and reds instantly on the fly instead of endlessly changing bulb combinations until you find what you like. Up next we have the Castle A360X, which we've long touted as being one of the most foolproof LED lighting options out there, clearly demonstrated in the data you're about to see, where we were able to provide a nearly identical spectrum ratio to our BRS recommended T5 bulb combo, using only two of the A360X's four controllable channels. Those four controllable channels start with a purposely locked down blue spectrum band channel that covers a wide blue band from 420 to 500 and scales up from zero to 100 while adding in more white, followed by three other supplemental channels with violet channel that peaks at 430, a red channel at 636, and a green spectrum channel that peaks at 512. So as I just mentioned, after several tweaks to these four channels, we were able to create a spectrum mix strikingly similar to our BRS recommended T5 bulb combo by simply setting the blue color channel to 30% and the UV channel to 100%, which widened out that entire spectrum band to just slightly less in that 400 to 420 range, but almost dead on from 440 to 540. The blue peak of the Kessel at 441 is only slightly to the right of the T5 peak at 436, but still the closest to that BRS recommended T5 range that we will see across all of LEDs in today's test. From an LED benefit standpoint shown here by the A360X, it doesn't get any easier to this when adjusting spectrum, where there's always a fixed peak locked down in that target spectrum range for coral metabolic function. Choosing a spectrum that works is as simple as tuning the tank to your eye and then scaling the intensity ratio across all channels to meet your PAR goals. Next we look at the latest G5 Radeon Blue which has double the amount of individual color control as the Castle that gives you the keys to eight different spectrum ranges starting with a UV channel that has a 404 nanometer peak, violet channel with a 424 peak, royal blue at 446 followed by a blue channel that peaks at 475, cyan blue green channel with a 498 peak, and a lime channel with a wide band covering 500 to 700. Red channel that spikes at 657, and finally a cool white channel with a more sharp blue peak at 442, along with a hump in that green to yellow 550 range. There is a unique benefit to the LED array that Ecotech targeted for the G5 Radeon Blue, and that is the ability to set each of these eight channels to 100% and produce a spectrum that will support both coral metabolic function as well as look pretty good to the eye, making the setup and adjustment of the Radeon Blue as simple as mounting it and adjusting the overall point intensity slider to meet your tank's PAR needs. Although most reefers, including myself, will likely choose to run the Radeon in this fashion, for the purpose of today's test, we revisited these settings to try and mimic our T5 bulb spectrum mix as closely as possible, meaning we found the best representation of our T5 spectrum with the UV channel set to 45%, 100% for violet, royal at 60, blue at 70, cyan at 50%, lime channel at 20, zero for the red, and cool white maxed out at 100%. Comparing the spectrum produced by those settings to that T5 bulb spectrum, we see that the Radeon Blue is fairly close with almost the entire wide blue band being represented in at least half of the spectrum chart, but with a very pronounced peak at 446. So with eight channels of control using the Radeon, the LED benefit here is there is far more configuration than ever in terms of spectrum adjustments. However, my biggest takeaway is the difference between the blue peak in the T5 spectrum mix around 436 versus the Radeon's strong royal blue peak around 446, which is really the range where we typically see that intense coral pop and fluorescence. Actually, that 445 to 450 spectrum range is so desirable for this purpose that many reefers who use T5s exclusively intentionally target that by adding in some LED supplement like the Reef Bright Actinic Blue XHO strips. In fact, when we added one of them to our BRS recommended T5 mix, you can see that it fills in that 450 peak and visually adds in more fluorescence. That 445 to 450 range is a feature unique to the Radeon Blue in this comparison, where we also have the ability to increase the intensity of that 450 peak at will, something you just can't do with T5 bulb combos alone. 
Next, we have the four channel 100 watt MaxSpec Razor X with a combined royal blue and cool white channel A that has a prominent peak at 443 and that small shoulder in the green and yellow spectrum from the additional cool white LEDs that tops out around 550. Channel B is a combination of royal blue and light blue LEDs together creating a wide peak at 450 to 460 followed by a channel C of deep blue and violet LEDs which create one of the widest offerings that we've ever tested in this near UV range at peaks at 396 and almost completely fills that 380 to 420 band. Lastly, there's a channel D that combines deep red, cyan, and warm white LEDs for an interesting spectrum mix with peaks at 662, 500, and a small hump around 440. The Razor's approach to controlling two or three different LED types using a single channel shows up in those wider peaks and spectrum bands versus the sharp spikes in LEDs like the Hydra and Radeon. But did those pre-blended channels allow us to recreate our 8-bulb T5 spectrum mix? After mixing them together and testing the spectrum blend, we came up with our best representation of the recommended T5 spectrum with the channel A and B set to 100%, channel C at 75%, and channel D at 40%, which resulted in a spectrum mix that was a bit thinner than the overall blue band with a similar 445 to 450 peak as the Radeon Blue. Although we weren't able to completely fill in that 400 to 430 spectrum using the Razor's four fixed color channels, its unique near UV and violet spectrum mix absolutely sets it apart from T5s by providing the ability of not only attaining the spectrum range in much higher ratios than you could ever do with T5s alone, but also attaining those ranges in higher ratios than any other LEDs we've tested so far. Which also begins to raise questions about how reefers might be able to harness this unique LED ability to test hobbyists' theories that controlling near UV spectrum might manipulate or change coral fluorescence. With that in mind, I think we can clearly give a 9 out of 10 reef certainty for our first question today of can we use LEDs to match the spectrum mix of our BRS recommended 8-bulb T5 combo? Looking at the spectrum comparisons for what we were able to create using four different approaches to LED control, there are clearly LEDs that were able to match our T5 combo almost identically and some that were easier to control than others. Keeping in mind that today's test was about demonstrating the adjustability of LEDs over T5s rather than a conversation about which spectrum is the best. Nearly every reef tank centric LED option out there is capable of growing corals. However, we believe that it's those that target a wide blue spectrum approach that will achieve the most success. Related to that, I'm giving a solid 10 out of 10 for the second question today. Can LEDs actually improve on that spectrum in ways T5s just aren't able to do? Outside of providing those spectrum ranges for corals energy needs, I think we clearly saw three distinct ways that LEDs can improve our corals coloration in the tank, and that is one, LEDs are the only way to add in and specifically target that strong royal blue 450 peak without affecting the others for eye popping coral fluorescence that's just not available in T5s. Two, LEDs allow you to control the addition of near UV lighting below 420 nanometers in higher ratios than T5s, which most of the reefing community believes creates or changes coral fluorescence color pigments or color morphs. And three, LEDs provide the ability to adjust non-fluorescent coloration of corals and fish through having dynamic control over reds, greens, and whites, allowing you to highlight subtle changes in hue, shade, and tint. But do those benefits mean that T5s are outdated and no longer relevant? Trust me T5 users, I would be screaming at my screen right now along with you if I said the answer was yes. So for those of you who still hold a place in your heart for T5s like I do, in this next episode over here, I'm sharing our BRS recommended bulb combinations, mounting heights, and PAR data for a 4, 6, and 8 bulb ATI T5 sun power fixture that you won't want to miss.